Thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you. Uh, good good uh, afternoon to everybody. Um, it's nice to see that uh, I've seen few uh, students already, so this gives me a challenge to say exactly the same thing and not, not uh, something different. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here and uh, uh, to, to show you a few slides about uh, the oldest mission in peacekeeping operation in UN. Uh, the only mission that Israel is hosting currently as hosting country, uh, the only PKO, and uh, of course a mission that is purely military observer mission. Uh, we have uh, in the world two, this one, an Anmogib between India and Pakistan. Uh, as uh, we were a bit ordered here uh, what to present, this is uh, my agenda, and of course uh, we can develop after during questions. Uh, let me start with the, the famous uh, start of, uh, of the first ever uh, peacekeeping mission, 47, UN partition, 48, the conflict start, and then you have two resolutions, called for truce, and immediately UN deployed military observer to help the mediator uh, to uh, achieve ceasefire between Israel and, the, and four uh, Arab uh, countries. After those negotiations, four armistices were signed clearly and defined what the what all countries decided to accept and decided to respect. A uh, few events, of course, you you are perfectly aware of of those events. Uh, in red. Two events that conduct to see that military observer uh, must, in some case, be helped by a force, armed element. Uh, first in uh, in the Golan Heights with Andov to do what we call a buffer zone to separate force, and then also in '78 uh, uh, the uh, uh, Unifil uh, was uh, built, and here. Uh, Brigadier General Dolor Laval will explain you that more in details. Two points in blue, the peace treaty with Egypt and the peace treaty with Jordan. In that sense, two of the four armistices that were uh, uh, signed under the auspice uh, of United Nations and uh, UNSO were uh, uh, ended and the peace treaty started. So in that sense, the, the uh, armistice mechanism and uh, surveillance of UNSO, 50% uh, of the mandate was done. 2006, uh, a reminder, war can break, uh, uh, breaks any time in this area. This is the last four casualties of UNSO when OP Kiam was uh, uh, bombarded and four officers died there. Uh, we hope that this will not happen, for example, in the Golan Heights those days. Uh, the professor spoke about Chapter 7 mission. Here we are in Chapter 6 mission. The difference, Chapter 6, you cannot enforce the mandate. Chapter 7, you can enforce the mandate with, notably, arms and ammunition. Very different, very different topic and clearly hosting countries or, or countries that sign armistice can and are master in choosing chapter 6 or chapter 7 of course. Here you have the, the main task of, of a, a, a military observer mission in UN, uh, monitor ceasefire, supervise armistice agreements and uh, check that the party respect the agreements prevent incident and help other peacekeeping uh, mission. Uh, two colors, the green one to say that we are not limited by numbers. Sometimes you have a Security Council resolution saying uh, we want a force of 12,000 uh, troops like in Mali. 
Here is not the case. We can go up and down uh, with the number of military observers we have according to the situation. It's just a question to get enough money to have them in. And uh, geographically is the unique mission that touched five countries. Um, and also with that, we have the flexibility to move military observers from Egypt to Golan, from Golan to Lebanon, if we need more at a certain point of time, military observer in one or the other place uh, of Middle East. Uh, the task, I'm not going through all of them. Uh, I highlight two. Uh, one is we are specialists in Middle East about ceasefire lines. That means blue lines uh, for UNIFIL. That, that means Alpha Bravo line in Golan Heights for Andov, that means any other line. At the beginning, we were for sure the specialist of the green line that was defined by United Nations. And of course, now we, we assist UNIFIL and Andov in providing uh, expert on mission, as we call the military observer. They have to follow the doctrine of the military observer system of United Nations and they have to stay in a box of the mandate of UNSO, which is kind of a large box. Uh, by the way, uh, about the, the force, uh, you mentioned the force in UN, 2,800 military observers are working around our planet in the different UN missions. What, what is the intent of, of, uh, and the, uh, of the, the head of mission, General Kilpia, that cannot attend today, is leaving the mission tomorrow at 4 o'clock and will have a new general uh, for next month. When he received uh, his, uh, his uh, we call that in the, a compact in the UN, his task, he, he wanted exactly those points. He wanted trained military observer. You cannot send military observer, even though they are trained and exp uh, have some other experience, in the mission area without knowing what is going on here. So we have a system of training before sending people in the Golan, in Egypt, or anywhere else. Egypt, we want to maintain the presence there for several reasons. I will come back on, on that one. But also definitely because the hosting country want us to be there. Uh, Syria is key for uh, the military observer system of UN. Uh, there is a lot of things happening in Syria, but we have a task according to the armistice agreement between Israel and Syria. And for that task, we need to be both sides of the armistice lines. Uh, for us, uh, as uh, eyes and ears of the Security Council, how we call also the military observer, it's key to be on the spot. Dialogue, of course, we have this regional uh, mandate, second task of UNSO. And uh, about the training system, we, we, we really have to adapt. And those last years, we had to adapt about specifically uh, the hijacking. If 10 years ago it was about AODs, a roadside uh, bomb, uh, those two last years was, were a lot about uh, uh, hijacking. We integrate the events, especially uh, hijacking in Syria, and we present exactly case by case to the new animals what's going on and how the ANMO were able to get out without damage. You have seen uh, uh, two main hijacking in the, in the news from Filipinos, but you have not seen five or six hijacking of mi military observer because it, that lasted two to five hours and they were able to, to uh, be free also by their skills. Uh, and of course, the, the capacity to analyze and to adapt is key in, in, a, in, a, in a dangerous area like we can find in some area of Middle East. Shortly in Lebanon, uh, expert on blue line, you have the blue line here, and this is a little bit what kind of task we have. Blue line patrols, of course, village patrol meetings, 
and then you have the special reports. When you have a firing close, shooting report, uh, and all the, the different uh, reports till the special reports. This is ba basic in all the military observer system in UN. Military observer do that. If you go to OGG, observe group Golan, this is the very typical uh, old peacekeeping system. You have a war, you have two countries that fight each other with military equipment, and then at the end of the war they decide to stop the hostility. The, the idea here is to check that none of the both country, here you have Israel one side and, and Syria the other side, <coughs> start again a build-up of forces. So here in white you have the buffer zone and of camps who separate the force. There is no force of Israel or Syria in this area. And after you have in three colors the area of limitation where we physically count the number of tanks, of troops, of artillery, and anti-aircraft uh, missiles. When the two countries stay under the, this limit, that means that they, they, don't want, they are not building up for our next war, and they, they, they uh, still comply, comply to the armistice agreement. And here, uh, of course, you have seen uh, uh, in the news a lot of violation about sh shooting, uh, line crossing, this is the white area. When it comes to the three other area, this is the area of limitation. There is uh, no build-up of force, neither from Israel nor from uh, Syria. Or at least they are below what they agree, both countries, to respect. In that sense, uh, here we can say that the two countries are still committed to the armistice. Then. Uh, we spoke about the unique uh, uh, case of ANSO being regional, and for that we need liaison office in Beirut, in Damascus, in Cairo, and here you have a little bit the, the, the staff. Uh, we still have people in, in uh, those uh, countries uh, for <coughs> specifically those reasons. Link with the uh, diplomatic communities, link with the TCCs uh, representative in those countries, the, their embassies, TCCs is troop contributing countries. Uh, of course, link with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Defense of each uh, country uh, uh, touched by this, uh, those armistice. This is mainly done by diplomatic calls from the head of mission, uh, uh, Major General Kilpia at that time, and is going and see all uh, those people, can convey also some message when it go from one country to the other countries. Uh, of course, those uh, listen office do some reporting uh, about the situation according to what is agreed between the hosting country and the mission. The last one is uh, the security uh, uh, meetings, management uh, team, uh, in each country, UN has a system. All agencies of UN, being peacekeeping mission or other mission, meet and decide what about the security in each country. And here, of course, since we travel in all those countries, we have to be up to date what are the danger, what are the security measures that we have to respect. Uh, one slide that I like in Egypt, uh, Sinai. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, MFO uh, representative was not able to come this afternoon. You have uh, a band of uh, 10 kilometers from the Israeli border where MFO camp are. And then you see in the zones AD, uh, left uh, up, uh, where you have uh, green, brown uh, area. Those are the area where MFO are doing inspection. Same inspection that ANSO do in the Golan Heights. What we do in those areas, we do only patrolling system. So it's kind of a lighter system, and uh, uh, for several reasons, uh, internal reason, uh, political reason, but also when you have a peacekeeping, when you host a peacekeeping mission, you have also some facility to, be, to participate in other peacekeeping missions. 
So Israel hosts ANSO, so they can send a soldier or MILOPS to other missions if they want. And very easily. Uh, we were asked about the structure, to present the structure. Here you have in green what we call in UN uh, a substantive section. This is the military. In yellow is the support. Unso, very old mission, purely military, has only one substantive section. You don't find here rule of law, civil affairs, protection of uh, children, and, and so on. In new mission, new UN mission, you have a, a range of 9 to 10 or even more substantive sections. This is very unique. This is purely uh, when you have a peacekeeping mission about military. I will stop uh, here and uh, we'll take the question later. <laughs>